I've got my map software loaded and I'm going to go ahead and click start servers. This video is brought to you by Abby Pies Academy. That'll of course start the Apache server, the PHP, and the MySQL server, which is actually the database software that comes with MAP. It's a very, very common database package. And if you look here on the localhost MAP homepage, you'll see a MySQL section right here. And the MySQL section says MySQL can be administered with PHP MyAdmin. This is specifically administration software for local databases. So we can click right here and we can get into the PHP MyAdmin software. And as you can see, I've got a couple of databases here. These three databases are internal for the PHP MyAdmin software. This article database is a copy of the database we're about to build. If I click the databases tab up here, you can see the databases that already exist within the MySQL system. And I'm gonna create a database called Articles. Simply type the name and click Create. The Articles database has nothing in it, but it's now part of my PHP admin console and of course my MySQL database system on this particular computer running the MAMP server. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a database structure that looks like this. And this is a pretty simple database structure. It's got two individual tables. The first table has information about articles. Each article has an article ID and that's designed to be a unique number that identifies each individual article. That's why it has the PK here for primary key. The primary key is a field that's guaranteed to be unique in each table. The article table then has the article titles, the date, the topic, the author ID, which I'll talk about in a moment, a short description, and keywords. So this is just enough information to keep track of articles in our database. We're also going to track the authors. Now the authors are in a different table because they're really separate entities. Now our authors have a primary key of author ID. Note that that's the same field name as I used in table article to identify the author. So author ID here in table article is a foreign key which links to the author table via the ID field. So here if the author ID is 1, we'll enter an author ID of 1 in the table article to link that author to a specific article. You'll see more about how that works in a few moments. For each author, we're going to track a first name, last name, email address, and phone number. So that's our entire database diagram. Now again, this is a very simple database because it's the first one we're doing together. I've seen database diagrams that actually cover entire walls in actual live development environments. But this is good enough to get us started and will let us demonstrate many of the concepts found in databases. So now back to my SQL here, and the admin page wants us to create a table. So the first table we'll create is table article, and it has how many columns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we make a mistake here, we can always change that value later. Now, once I click go, it wants information about each of the fields that'll be part of table article. Now, not all of these fields are going to be used for right now. Our database is going to be rather simple. But first, let's enter our article ID, which you'll remember is our primary key. Primary keys are generally integers, so our type is going to be INT. Look at all those different types here. We have integers, varchar, kind of various characters. It also explains each one. Text, date, and then we have subtypes, tiny integer, small integer, etc. So lots of different types. We're going to keep it simple. And we're only going to be using a couple of these types. Like I said, article is ID is an int. We use int 11 for our primary key. And then if we move in this direction here, 
you can see I can make that the primary key by adding primary to the index field. And I'm gonna check AI for auto increment. That means it's automatically going to assign a number to this field. All right, so let's go back and let's do our next field. And that's gonna be article title. And that's gonna be a var char. And we'll give that up to 255 characters. We then have article date. That's gonna be a date field. And I'm not gonna set a length here because that's gonna be constricted by the date type. All right, so we just have a couple more to go. Topic, var char, 255. We then have author ID. Now, because we know this is gonna be a primary key in another table, I know that's gonna be an int 11. We then have short description. Now that could be a varchar that also could be a text field. Now varchar is various characters. Text fields is designed for longer amounts of text. Let's set that for 1028. And then finally, keywords, which we'll set for text and we'll make that 255. All right, so there we have our database structure. Now, if I click Preview SQL, it's gonna show me the actual SQL that it's going to write in order to create our table. And you can see here it uses the Create Table command, and then all of the fields are denoted here with their type. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Now I should note, if I want any of the fields to be nullable, meaning they can be left blank in a particular record, I'm gonna check null right here. And let's go ahead and let's check null for keywords and short description, because some of our articles may not have those fields included in the record. All right, so now I'm gonna click save, and it's actually gonna run that SQL you just saw, and you can see it's created all of our fields for this table along with the type. And then we have the opportunity here to change or drop any of these should we need to. But that's basically our table. And if you look here under articles, it now shows table article included. All right, so let's create our next table. So we're gonna create a new table here. I'm gonna go back to the database itself. And here it says create table. This will be table author. We'll move more quickly through this one. This just has five columns. So we'll start with author ID. That's an int 11. And then we've got to scroll over. And again, we're gonna make this a primary key. And then we're gonna click auto increment. Next fields are first name and last name. I like to use varchar if it's a one word answer and then I use text if it's a longer type of answer. So all of these are gonna be varchars. Email address, varchar255, and then phone number. Even though it's a number, we're gonna make it a varchar because it's not a number we're ever gonna do calculations on. All right, and here's the SQL and save. SQL is another language that actually is a generic language that most databases understand. So now we've got table article and table author. Now let's just quickly enter a couple of records. So I'm gonna go here to table author and let's go ahead and in the table, let's insert a record. So here it gives me the field. I'm gonna leave author ID blank because that's automatically generated. We'll enter first name and last name, email address, and a phone number. It's a good idea to leave all the dashes and dots out of the phone number. We'll enter one more.
So bill at fake.com, phone number 212. All right, so we've got these now. So we could again preview the SQL if we wanted to, and you can see exactly how that's entered. So you can see the information I typed and the uh, information for the second record. We'll click go. And it'll show us that the SQL has been executed. And if we look again at table author and let's click browse, we can actually see the data down here that's in the table. We could also edit it, copy and delete here if we wanted to. But now we've actually got some data in that table. Now I should note that what we've been looking at here with the PHP My Admin program is actually just a front end for a command line database tool. So let's go ahead and bring in our command line. And I've already typed the command to run the MySQL client here in the command line, along with my username, password, and host. So now we're in the MySQL client and you can see exactly what you can do in here by typing the help command. There's a lot of different options here and you can totally run your MySQL databases right from here. If I type show databases, it'll tell us that in the MySQL system right now, we've got articles, article, and of course the database is used by MySQL itself. Same thing that's shown over here in the PHP My Admin panel. So we're actually looking at the same set of data just through two different windows. The command line gives us access to absolutely everything. So if we wanted to use the articles database that we've just been working on here, I'll type use articles and we could use the show tables command to show the tables that are inside the database. So now you can see here we've got table article and table author. Same thing right here. Now if we want to run an actual SQL query, we can do it right from here. So I can type select all from, and let's go with table author and that's gonna show us the data that's in the table. Same data that's right here. So this allows us to execute direct commands against the database. Now the command line is important because you can practice here, you can issue commands here, the same way you'll issue commands with PHP a little bit later. Of course in PHP they'll be embedded in your PHP code, but here you can actually issue the SQL commands directly. So in this section, we've gone ahead and created a database. We've added a couple of fields and we've looked at that database through the PHP My Admin client and directly through the command line MySQL tool.